We're joined now by Ola Kalanias. He is CEO of Mercedes-Benz. They've just released earnings uh, this morning. A very strong year for 2022. What drove the strength? Good morning. Uh, 2022 for us was a very strong year with about uh, 20 billion euro of EBIT and a solid 18 euro of cash flow. Even though we were operating in a challenging market environment, our very strong product portfolio and our success to uh, go to market with that product portfolio high quality on our contribution margins and cost discipline uh, uh, delivered a very robust result for 2022. And 2023 is looking a little bit less sunny. Where do you think the kind of the weakness is going to come from that in 2023? I think we need to look at the macro environment and what the economy is, is going to do. It's now told that central banks around the world, when uh, inflation has been rising for, for the last uh, year or so, uh, to react with interest rate hikes. And that is designed to clearly uh, put a little bit of a cooling effect on consumption and get the inflation down. So we're watching uh, macro, and that is why uh, we take a slightly cautious uh, view on what the market will do and are guiding for sales around the same level as 2022. Uh, but at the same time, uh, our business model is very robust with a guidance of between 12 and 14% return on sales. Uh, if we execute well, 2023 can be another good year for us. And so you cite the consumer there being squeezed a bit. Are you seeing that change in kind of the cars that people are choosing to buy? Are you seeing a change in consumer behavior due to that squeeze? Not yet. Uh, we have been seeing on uh, nudging up in the segments that we in and also uh, uh, making sure that our top end offering is very attractive. In fact, in 2022, our top end vehicle sales grew by 8% and we are looking at uh, another slight growth on the top end side for this. So uh, managing your portfolio and uh, making sure that you find the right operating point in the market, I think will be key for 2023. Um, and on that subject, you cut prices for the EQS over in China. Um, how has that reacted in terms of sales? Has that worked and what went wrong there? Uh, what we're trying to do with products around the world is uh, very much like other luxury companies do is make sure that you have uh, somehow level pricing around the world so that equivalent products have roughly the same price uh, levels uh, in the main markets. Uh, that's what we did with two models in China. Uh, last year, our battery electrical sales grew by just shy of 70 percent. Uh, this year, uh, we will be in a position to double our sales of electric vehicles. So uh, the future direction going electric uh, is set and we're executing on it. And China is your is your biggest market. Obviously, we've seen tensions rise. It's one of the things you cite as a concern uh, in your outlook. Um, how is Mercedes preparing in case the things further deteriorate? What is your plan there? Well, the Mercedes model, of course, uh, is also based on the ability to uh, export and import uh, across the world, driven by the WTO uh, rules. Uh, what we have learned from the um, COVID and the supply chain issues that we had mainly on the semiconductor side over the last couple or three years is that we need to create optionality on the supply chains. And we're working on that in our main verticals. Uh, but let's remind ourselves uh, what has been the success for growth of the economy over the last 30 years. It's been uh, free trade. And I read on Bloomberg recently that the trade between the United States and China had uh, reached a new peak uh, in spite of the geopolitical uh, tensions.